what's up guys and welcome back to another EVE Online video. Today uh, we're back with Moon Drills um, to see what we can do about adding value and improving the return on investment of our drills, uh, particularly in wormhole space. So I, uh, if you've been following the channel, I recently anchored a Moon Drill um, in our wormhole and then I did a video which will be linked in the top right here on the return on investment of a, of a moon drill in JSpace if you basically just sell the raw materials that come out of it. And basically what we established was at the time of writing, or at the time of recording I should say, um, it took 92 days to pay off the moon drill. After that point everything is pure profit. But that's raw materials. I am a part-time industrialist at heart and so I very rarely just flog raw materials so I've been looking into what to do uh, with those outputs to try and turn them into a slightly bigger profit margin. Now what do we get out of JSpace Moon materials? It is the R4 um, items here. Uh, so for this particular moon I get atmospheric gases, hydrocarbons and silicates and we're missing evaporate deposits but those four elements make up um, R4 moons and they're what you can get in J space you can get them all across New Eden but you can only get R4 moons um, in high second and J space um, all other the R8 and above moons are available in uh, uh, across New Eden so these numbers I'm going to go through today are applying specifically to our four moons and where you might do this you can of course apply this to any other moons uh, but you need to look into different materials um, and we are talking about numbers that are appropriate at time of recording. The markets are moving quite quickly. Um, material prices are dropping as people drop, put more and more moon drills down. Um, and also there are some upcoming changes to skyhook mechanics um, in early October that, should, that might mean the price of uh, magmatic gas, which you need to fuel the drills, also comes down. So, you know, the numbers will change, but if the price of everything is coming down, then... Um, then maybe the margins will stay the same. Um, so yeah, let's have a look then. I Quick word of warning, um, if you're watching this in the dark or at night or something, I'm about to swap to a spreadsheet, which uh, will be quite a bright white screen. So um, uh, have a little look at that. <laughs> you might want to do something about your brightness before we swap over. So let's go. We have the four R4 moon materials and we have the four fuel block types because these are what are required to do um, reactions. So let's just have a quick a quick look. Uh, let's go back into moon drill details and just open up atmospheric gases. Uh, there we go. You go to the industry tab. This is everything you can do with atmospheric gases. Um, and of course, um, if you go into each one, you can find out what uh, that, that these top three, oxyorganic solvents, sulfuric acid and thermosetting polymers, are produced using only R4 moon materials and fuel blocks. These other two at the bottom um, use also just R4 moon materials. Okay, I thought, um, so like the, the normal hexite, not unrefined, uses um, higher class moon materials. So I may look into these as well to see, um, to see if there's profit, but not in this video. But I'm looking into these three here. Uh, to see um, what we can do to make additional cash and then if you go into each one again um, look at the outputs the oxy organic solvents you see that they go into pressurized oxidizers and reinforce carbon fiber reactions long term these items go into um, capital manufacturing and other stuff uh, faction ship manufacturing um, so there's a, a good demand for these but we're not going to talk about that now we're going to stop at this level. So basically two steps of reactions. What do you need to be able to perform reactions? Um, you need the appropriate facility, um, which is, oh, what's the composite? I think it's a composite uh, material laboratory um, for particularly designed for moon materials. Um, and they cannot be applied to structures in um, high security space. So unfortunately, if you've got a moon drill in a 0.5 system, which is possible, uh, you wouldn't be able to take the materials and react them in high sec. You'd have to find a low sec 
NullSec or JSpace facility. Of course, uh, pretty much every wormhole, if they've got industrial stuff set up, will have some uh, reaction labs because of the wormhole gas, um, or you do a different one for moon materials if you've already got other drills set up. So we've got this capability in JSpace. So yes, we have um, hydrocarbons and atmospheric gases going into oxyorganic solvents. So if you're uh, evaporate deposits and atmospheric gases going to sulfuric and silicates and atmospheric gases going into thermosetting polymer but then also if we go into a different one you've got a couple more as well so carbon fiber and carbon polymers which also if you can go long term go into pressurized oxidizers um, and if we go into for example carbon fiber that's an input for reinforced carbon fiber reaction. So we've got those inputs in a spreadsheet. If I go over here, um, for example, pressurized oxidizers require carbon polymers, sulfuric acid, and oxyorganic solvents. Uh, reinforced carbon fiber requires carbon fiber, thermosetting polymer, and oxyorganic solvents. And all of these only require R4 moon materials and fuel blocks. So what we've done is, um, move across please, uh, just recorded the due to sell price uh, for each material because this is what we could sell uh, if we just shipped the materials out to uh, GTA uh, at RAW, this is what we could sell them for. And that's what our 92 day return on investment was based on. And then of course there's the fuel block prices which we've also done due to sell. Um, but obviously you, if you're going to buy, you can either produce them yourself and then you've got a factory in you to sell um, for your potential margin or you can place buy orders so you can bring the, the cost down slightly. And we've got the, basically then the, the cost, so the input materials g to sell cost to produce one run of each of these reactions. You'll see oxyorganic solvents is um, significantly higher cost than the others, um, but that's because you need a lot less of it in the manufacturing process down the line. Um, so each unit is more expensive. Um, however, it does, you will notice if you, when you dive into this, that because of the oxyorganic solvents, your reliance on hydrocarbons and atmospheric gases is slightly higher. So you need an equal amount of the other four um, to produce uh, reinforced carbon fiber and uh, what's the other one called again? Pressurized oxidizers. You need equal amounts of these four, and they need equal amounts of um, the uh, R4 moon materials. So you'll see e two counts of each. Evaporate deposits one, two. Atmospheric gases one, two. Hydrocarbons one, two. And silicates one, two. And then one flavor of each fuel block. So nice and even. But then because of the introduction of oxyorganic solvents, you need a, a little slightly higher um, dependence on hydrocarbons and atmospheric gases, and of course, oxygen fuel blocks. And so we've got the input cost for each of these uh, as a single runs. And then we have the uh, what's required to produce these um, final step in in, uh, use from the cost of the raw materials. So what I initially looked at was um, e the profit for each step. So what you can see here, for example, is if you were just to do the first reaction, so if you were just to produce carbon polymers and go and sell them on the market, you do have a small margin per run. Um, I haven't actually done the margin, I haven't calculated the percentage, but you know, you, you're, you're making uh, before any taxes, 119,000 ISK per run uh, for carbon polymers if you use the GTA cell price of the input materials. Uh, similarly, 145,000, 222,000. So if you, if you just want to do this first one, um, first reaction, you will make decent profit, uh, particularly around the oxyorganic solvents. Um, but because this is a nice round number, it does suggest to me that the market isn't great on these. And to be fair, I haven't looked um, 
I'm in my wormhole, so we can't look at Jitra at the moment, but the market probably isn't good on these first steps, because if you're going to do the first step, you might as well do the second step. Um, and that's where the numbers are really nice, actually. So I then also ran the numbers for like, this is profit from step one. So this is only the profit going from this step to this step. And, you know, it's it's fine. It's good profit, but it's, it's, it is what it is. But actually, if you take the input price of the raw materials and just do the two steps of reactions, go all the way through, for the final unit, you make really good profit per run this is so you get 200 units of each output but per run of the reaction just to just to uh, indicate what I mean there let's go into here again uh, go sulfuric acid go to pressurized oxidizers you see uh, one run requires this input and you get 200 pressurized oxidizers out and it takes uh, three hours or if you've got skills and things um, less um, of course so not bad and what that basically means is the cost of the materials as mentioned you've got 200 units of let's have a look 200 units of sulfuric acid is 337,000 according to this and that's because sulfuric acid outputs 200 units and it costs 337,000 to produce using the raw materials at the other table, I didn't, I'd looked at the sell price of sulfuric acid, but if we're going straight from raw materials all the way through, what is our profit margin? We need the cost of producing the sulfuric acid and then the cost of carried through to the final reaction. So 200 units of sulfuric acid costs 337,080. And then so our, as our input here, we have 200 units of sulfuric acid costs 337,080. And so that gives us our input costs down here for both pressurized oxidizers and reinforced carbon fiber. And then the sell price for 200 units at the moment is, is pretty good. You can sell for um, 1.9 million and 2.1 million respectively. None of this uh, factors in um, any taxes. So manufacturing tax or um, broker's fees and, and selling costs, for example. So do factor that into your own numbers but before taxes we're looking at a full a 100% markup uh, from being able to do this and even higher for um, for the reinforced carbon fiber so I mean even after taxes that actually might be 100% markup which is pretty pretty awesome right so if if our moon uh, drill originally cost it was going to be 92 days in return of investment if we're able to be efficient with the use of materials um, which you know you need more moons to be able to do this as I, as I mentioned um, we've only got the three that was a uh, server downtime's just kicked in we've got the three materials coming out of our current moon um, and I can't do this with just three materials I need all four and of course you need a nice balance of all four to get it working really efficiently but if you're able to get all four out nice and efficiently across your moons you will make a 100% markup on your raw material price um, when doing this process at time of recording and so in theory our 92 day return on investment drops to uh, 46 days per moon drill so you know you kind of got to do it almost um, but yeah, I, I, I was pleased. I knew there would be a markup, but when I looked into it properly and realized there's going to be a 100% um, markup, uh, that's really good. So I'm going to, we've, we've got a nice pile of these materials now because we've had our drill for a m couple of months and I'm going to start p pushing these things through uh, and producing them. Of course, the more of you that go and do this, the more it will impact the market, but it's, the market's in flux anyway with all the new uh, stuff. So we'll see how it goes. And then what I'm not going to um, do the maths on, but of course, you can't just run the reactions. Um, you probably can't just run the reactions constantly because it would depend on how many units of each material you're getting. If we need, for example, um, how many hydrocarbons are we going to need for our each run? Um, if we ignore the oxyorganic solvents, we need 
100 units and 100 units. So we need 200 units every couple of hours for each run of the reactions. We get 137 every hour. So, you know, maybe we could run it perpetually. Um, but if you then, of course, if you've got multiple moons and you're trying to balance it, you might be able to run two or three reactions simultaneously. And, and so, for, you know, you're going to have to play with your profit margins there. I'm not going to go into detail here because uh, honestly, I don't really care enough. Um, but uh, yes, you may or may not, depending on your balance of materials coming out of your moon, be able to run your reactions constantly. And so the numbers we've gone through today may not, you know, might not be able to half the 92 day cycle, for example. But thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, if you uh, are enjoying the moon stuff, uh, please consider liking and subscribing. My links, uh, creator code and all that kind of good stuff are in the description. If you want to join my Discord, it's on my YouTube channel um, information. So, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for sticking with me and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers. I have realized that throughout my video, I didn't turn off the blur in this corner. Um, when I was in the spreadsheet, I apologize for that. Uh, it must be quite annoying. Uh, hopefully, um, when I've gone through the recording, uh, hopefully because we zoomed in so nicely, it's still actually legible, which is why I've not re-recorded, but I just want to uh, recognize that I did make that mistake, uh, and apologize to all of you. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too frustrating and you've still been able to see the numbers. Uh, I believe it's been the case, but yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, thanks again, guys, um, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.